Hey guys, Jeff here with Dustless Technologies coming at you again with another video. Thanks for coming back to our channel. Today we want to talk about vacuums, what makes a good vacuum. Uh, we get asked a lot of times what makes a good vacuum, how much horsepower does a vacuum need, or, or what's a good horsepower for a vacuum. And to be honest, horsepower really doesn't have anything to do with a vacuum. What you're looking for is CFM and water lift. So first off, we want to talk about CFM. Uh, CFM is equal to airflow. Uh, so basically, it is the amount of air that is flowing through your vacuum. Uh, it's measured in cubic feet per minute, so CFM. And a very common CFM for a good vacuum is around 120 to 125 CFM. So the next part is water lift or suction, uh, also known as static pressure. Uh, it gets its name from a test that is run. And basically that test, you take a vertical tube, you put some water in that vertical tube, and then you take your vacuum and you stick it on the top of that tube and turn your vacuum on. And the vacuum sucks that water vertically up the tube. And that measurement of how far that water lifts is the measurement of your water lift. Now, um, a very common water lift for a vacuum is around 80 to 85 inches of water lift. So a good vacuum will have a very balanced uh, water flow and CFM. Um, a lot of customers will uh, be very disappointed uh, when they go to the store, they get their vacuum, they take it home and they plug it in to use it. Uh, and it doesn't perform like the store said it would. Um, basically, what has happened is they've got an unbalanced uh, airflow and CFM. Uh, airflow, CFM, and suction water lift. Um, so, it, what could happen, for example, is they could take it home, they could turn it on. The vacuum might have a great airflow. It has plenty of air flowing through the system, but it has very, very little suction. And so, it won't pick anything up off the ground. And so, they're disappointed because the vacuum is not collecting like they thought it would. So an example I like to use to help people maybe understand a little bit, uh, Im imagine it a little bit, uh, is like cars. Uh, you have a, a, a race car that goes really fast, but it doesn't really haul anything. And you got a semi truck, semis don't go really fast, but they can haul a lot of stuff. So that's your airflow, your CFM, and your suction, your water lift. Um, what you're really looking for is a monster truck somewhere in between that has great CFM and great water lift. It goes fast and it hauls things. So when you're in the store, you're looking for a vacuum, you have all the vacuums in front of you, don't worry about the horsepower. What you're looking for is water lift and CFM. You look for a good CFM around 120 plus and you look for a good water lift that is around 80 plus. Uh, once you find those two in one vacuum, you should have a pretty good vacuum right there. So, our D1606 and our D1603, our HEPA wet dry vacuum and our wet dry vacuum, they have 130 CFM and 103 inches of water lift. Great vacuums. So guys, I hope this video helped you a little bit understand the difference between CFM and water lift and horsepower that's not really important to vacuums. Hope that gives you a little bit of understanding so that when you're out looking for a vacuum, uh, you can uh, you can pick a good one. Uh, thanks again for watching the video. If you have any comments, please leave them in the uh, comments below. Um, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to our channel and hit that little notification bell so that you get notifications of new videos coming out. Thanks again for watching, guys, and remember, keep it dustless.